Hello and welcome to Programming Knowledge. So this is the final part of the video series. So in this video, we will be learning how to add CNAME to the CloudFront distribution. So as you can see in the last video, we had created a certificate. So it is now issued and uh, you can see that validation is done su successfully. Now we'll go in Route 53 and here you can see our record is added already. Now we'll go in services and click on cloud front. Okay, so here are, here are our distributions. So select the programming knowledge.ga and then click on edit. Now select the custom uh, custom SSL certificate. And now you can see the in the drop down you can see the programming knowledge.ga. So select that uh, certificate. Okay, and everything is okay we'll click on yes edit okay so now we'll go in our domain name and you can refresh it okay it is not still okay one thing we have to do is uh, we'll go again in the edit because we want to add the alternate domain name it is a c name so in the alternate domain name we have to provide a domain name that is programming knowledge.ga remove the http and then uh, also the forward slash in the tail and we'll click on yes edit okay so now this is done we have successfully added our uh, certificate to the cloudfront distribution now we we'll go in uh, behaviors okay so in here we have to select the behavior and click on edit and here we have we have something called viewer protocol policy so we will redirect the http to https so if anybody goes like uh, with http programming knowledge.ga so we can uh, redirect that user to the https secure so okay so here you can see it maximum ttl and default ttl so this is about the platform distribution cache cleaning time we'll do that in the in some time so our behavior is set up now we'll go in uh, our domain name we'll click on refresh okay it is still not uh, loading because we have to configure route 53 to connect to the platform distribution so we'll go in uh, route 53 we can see our hosted zone so we'll click on the our domain name let's load so here you can see there are three records already you have to create one more record so name you can give as www.programmingknowledge.ca but uh, let me click uh, keep it as the uh, same as uh, programming knowledge dot I don't want uh, the subdomain etc. So type will keep as AIP for address and alias. Alias we have to select S and uh, target we have to provide our uh, CloudFront distribution. So here you can see the CloudFront distribution is there. Click on that. Okay. We verify this CloudFront distribution is the same as the one we have already created so go in uh, cloudfront okay here in general okay here you can see the domain name it is given as t39 then dot cloudfront.net so come in round 53 okay here you can verify it is the same okay and alias is like a, a other name for the particular uh, cloudfront distribution so we click on next Okay, our record is created. Now we will go in. Uh, okay, we we'll click on the record. It seems okay. We'll refresh that page, and now we'll go in our programming knowledge.ga. And here we have. We will click on okay, connect. You can see our website is loaded now. Finally. Okay. So this is how we can host a static portfolio website on uh, AWS. So. We'll check for the HTTP and HTTPS. So we'll remove the HTTPS and we'll click uh, continue. 
enter okay. let me do it like manually http okay. well, here you can see that uh, we are already redirected to https so it is working now we'll try for uh, some invalid URL. so you can see i typed hi and uh, it gave me response like something is not right we can try with something else like error.html which is set up particularly for this it is showing the same thing something is not right okay yeah it's the same it gives anything you type it will give you error because those pages are not there in the s3 bucket now now we'll go in s3 bucket so i will show you what will happen if we delete a particular uh, file or uh, you can say if we change a particular file in s3 bucket so you click on s or uh, programming knowledge bucket and uh, here we have error.html okay here you can see and it is uploaded last modified etc so let me open it yeah you can see something is not right so we'll go in uh, s3 management console and So here we'll go in actions and we'll select delete. Okay, so yes, we want to delete. Okay, so our error.html is deleted and then we can go in. We'll close this tab. Now we'll go in uh, our website. We can select, uh, we'll go high. So it is saying that something is not right. So we have already deleted like error.html we try error.html. So we are deleted from the S3 bucket. Then why it is showing us the same error page when it is not there in S3 bucket? That is because the CloudFront distribution cache our uh, S3 content, S3 bucket content. So here you can see the statistics reports. So it takes around 24 hours to uh, to make the changes available on the CloudFront distribution. So after 24 hours, our uh, error.html will be changed. So now I'll show you how to change the CloudFront distribution default uh, uh, cache cleaning time. So we'll go in, we'll select the CloudFront distribution, we'll go in behaviors and we'll select uh, uh, edit and we'll go now. Here you can see something is called default TTL. So this is the time in seconds which uh, the CloudFront cache will stay before the CloudFront forwards another request to our origin. So that is simply means like it will take this much amount of time for clearing our cache from the CloudFront distribution. So 86,400 means uh, 24 hours. So we'll select object caching and customize. Now we'll change the default TTL as zero. So anything we change in our S3 bucket will change automatically at that particular time. We'll select the next so here you can see the our behavior we have set up now we'll go back to the cloud from distribution so you can see the status in, in progress now open our text editor it is sublime text so i'll create a new file let me close this uh, folder okay so i'll create a new file for error.html So, error.html, I will type and save it as a channel file. I will save it in desktop. So, let me select that. We will type HTML, press enter. Okay, our title will give it as a AWS static website host. So in our body section, we'll give an image for the error, like image SRC will give as a location where our image is stored. So let me, okay. So we, in our S3 bucket, we have image folder and in that we have our images. So I will type image forward slash, then we'll type the name of the file. So I will give it as a error.jpg or PNG in my case. Okay, that's all. We'll save this file. 
now we'll go in chrome and you can see we had already already one file that is 404 page not found this is a png file so i'll upload this file along with the error.html so i'll upload in this uh, image folder add files and we'll go in uh, present 404 error.png so we'll click on upload we have to rename this also because 404 dash error is there so after it gets uploaded we will rename that okay it is uploaded now click on that we will select actions we will rename and we will remove the 404 and the minus sign that is saved and okay our file is saved now we have to come back Okay, select the programming knowledge bucket and here we have to upload our error.html. So add file, add files and go in uh, desktop, select the uh, error.html and upload. So our error.html is uploaded. So we'll refresh that uh, S3 bucket. So our region is Asia Pacific, Mumbai. And now we'll go in our domain programming knowledge.g. So, okay, now we'll go to error.html or something like hi. Let me show you what happens. Like, see, our error page is now 404 not found because we have changed the CloudFront distribution. So, our CloudFront, CloudFront distribution is still not deployed, it is in progress. So, let's go with error.html. So, since it is not completely deployed. Here we can see that uh, our error.html is still not up, uh, updated. So you can see the status in CloudFront distribution. It is still in progress. So you will refresh that. It takes some time, like around 5 or 10 minutes, maybe at most. So you can give like something else if you want. Let's type HTML key. So it will show this error. So the problem for it showing this error for error.html is because that particular file is not still uh, uh, refreshed in the CloudFront distribution. Okay. So this is how we can change the CloudFront distribution's basic uh, time to load time. Now I'll show you how to uh, how much it cost for the host university website on my AWS. So we'll go in billing from the services. So let the billing dashboard load. Here you can see our billing and cost management dashboard. So it shows like 0 0.59. So this is particularly for out 53. So month to date. So this is September 2019. So it is costing me around 0 0.59. So our uh, particular services usage, we can see Amazon simple. It is a S3 bucket free tier limit we have 2000 like that and uh, for this month that is september we have 42.27 rupees we have to pay to the aws for the rod 53 service we are using and also you can go to order and invoices so here you can see the detail here you can also download the csv file or print the file so We have also GST in India, so that is zero point zero nine dollar. Okay, that is all, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was very helpful for you.